Welcome to the Potion Podcast, your raw look at the hospitality industry, brought to you by SHC. What is happening, Potion? Welcome to another episode of the Potion Podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Sean Sewell. Um, this week's episode is a little bit different. I'm doing sort of a little seminar, a little PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to be sharing the screen. So if you are listening to the podcast, uh, listen away. But uh, to get the real value out of this one, you're going to have to go and track down the video on my YouTube channel or on the blog post that I'll be posting on the SHC website. So why am I doing a, a specific episode about break-even points, which is very, very odd? Um, it's mainly because I did an episode last week uh, after the, PA, the printed, the written PHO for BC came out in regards to bars and restaurants showing at 10 p.m. So liquor cannot be served after 10 p.m. in BC right now if you're a restaurant or a bar, and you have to be shut by 11 p.m. So what I've seen is a lot of restaurants start extending hours, of course, uh, picking up an extra two hours, three hours before they usually would be open, doing brunch, doing lunch service. So I really want to sort of lean into the scope of what this means for your business, because I think a lot of people are just jumping in thinking that doing a couple of extra hours will make up the difference of being shut for an extra couple of hours. But this is the thing. If it fits with, really look at it, does it fit with your brand? Um, is doing brunch a thing that fits with your brand now and in the long term? Um, the one thing about picking up brunch or doing lunch services that I kind of feel like this is something you lean into and you got to sort of continue doing. You can't just sort of pop off for a couple of weeks and then everything goes back to normal and you cancel brunch. I, I For brand loyalty and equity, I think that's a really bad move. That's a different episode altogether. Today, we're going to be talking about break-even points. Why is a break-even point really, really important right now? It's always fucking important, but it's super important right now because... Uh, we are getting chained at the the ankle. We, we've got reduced seating. We've got reduced hours. So we're really in chain at the ankle. So knowing exactly what your break-even point is for your restaurant or your bar is super important right now because a break-even point, I'm going to start sharing my screen here so that you can sort of, we can start, get, start going through this. Okay. No, but I want that. I want... Uh, There we go. So what is your break even point? Your break even point is the money you need to make to, to make zero profit. Basically the amount of money you need to exist, to operate, to pay your bills, pay your staff, pay everything and have zero dollars left at the end of the, that period. So that's your break even point. You really should know this. Um, and be really in tune exactly with this because this really sets your budgets into, in, into play. Um, your break-even point really sets the tone for all of your budgeting and all of your sales projections. So what is your break-even point? The minimum you must make to cover expenses and operate with zero profit. So you end with zero. So how do you calculate this? It's total fixed costs divided by total projected sales minus variable costs divided by projected sales. So you can see that thing there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this a couple more times so you will be able to get around, head, wrap your head around it a couple of times. So projected sales. What is your per head spend? I know a ton of restaurateurs who do not know what their per head spend is. I track my per head spend at Clive's and I've tracked my per head spend at every restaurant I've ever done so I can really see how it fluctuates and why it fluctuates. It should be as consistent as possible. And then when it fluctuates sometimes the five to $10, you can really ask questions of what happened that night. Did that fluctuate? Is there more education needed for your staff training? Um, did you just have teetotalers in because there was an opera on? Um, there's so many factors that go into it, but if you track it, you can actually really see how everything sort of works within your restaurant. The per head spend I think is super important. Now, if you're an existing restaurant, you should know this already. Um, but if you're a brand new restaurant or you're starting to do a new style of service, i.e. brunch, I'm going to keep bringing up brunch and lunch service. Um, you're going to have to do a projected per head spend. So, and I put in brackets there, bull and bear. So bull is where you really would love it to be, but also think about the bear as well, which is like, what is the minimum? What if everybody just comes in and has a light snack and a pop? 
What does that money cost? What if someone comes in and has a steak and a couple of beers? What is that? That's a bull market. So have a look at your bull and bear. If you were starting off a new thing like projected uh, for brunch, lunch, you should really know this really, really heavy. How many covers can you do? Not how many covers do you want to do? How many covers can you do? How many covers do you project to do? So one flip, two flips, three flips, four. I sound like a Dr. Seuss book there, but um, how many covers can you do? And how many flips and turns can you do? It's lunch. So you've probably got an hour service. So you're probably going to do one flip brunch, maybe a flip and a half, two flips, depending on how long your brunch goes for, but really be this bull and bear thing has to sort of fill all these sort of places, especially if you're doing a new style of service, a new service, uh, period brunch, lunch, so on and so forth. This is something you really need to really, really wrap your head around because thinking that you're going to have the same per head spend as what you would have, say at 11, 30, 12 o'clock on a Friday night, may be ostentatious. So what are fixed costs? Fixed costs are stuff costs that every month do not change. That's why they're called fixed. I know. <clears throat> so rent, mortgage payments, professional services, marketing, accounting, legal, insurance, premiums, licenses. There's a few other, but these are the four main ones that are fixed every single month. They do not change. Your rent is not changing. Everything sort of stays the same. Variable costs, utilities. Now utilities can sort of fall into fixed and uh, fixed and variable depending on how you're open. Um, with this, you, if you have utilities are relatively fixed, i.e. gas and water, you can throw that up in the fixed section. Um, and you pay that fixed cost regardless if you're open for 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week. That's where the fixed costs sort of play into. Fixed costs are something that don't change even if you're open. You pay them regardless of how, if you're shut for the whole week, you still have to pay them. Variable can go up and down. Unexpected expenses. Now, usually this goes into people's P&Ls as like um, maintenance and uh, equipment uh, servicing, stuff like that. Usually there's a small budget every month of like a, a rainy day fund for these sort of occurrences. And then inventory. Now we're going to talk about with the, with the formula I gave you earlier. Um, that one is very, very simple. It's very structured. It's very easy to wrap your head around inventory starts getting into contribution margin and how you contribute your margin affects your break even point. But what you're going to do with your inventory is once you've got your projected sales, you should roughly be able to tell you, explain how much it's going to cost you to have inventory for those extra sales. So IE what's your overall bar expense uh, inventory cost. So let's say 25%. So 25% of your projected sales is what your inventory is going to be. Same thing with food, brunch, lunch, so on and so forth. So this inventory, like people are going to try and wrap your head around, like just think of a percentage, make the percentage, what it is for your uh, projected sales. And then you have your inventory costs and how much it's going to cost you purchasing and uh, sales cost. And mixed costs, as you can see, I put a massive labor capitals. Now labor if you, if you go Google it online, labor sort of falls in uh, variable costs. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a mixed cost. So what you're going to do with your labor, again, if you know what your percentage of labor is on your P&Ls and so on and so forth, you should roughly know what your budget is. So again, your labor is a percentage of your projected sales. Labor is a mixed cost. Why? Because I would say 80% depends on what sort of restaurant you run. 60 to 70% maybe 80% is fixed. You need that many people. You need those bodies. You need those labor costs to operate, to be open. Then the rest is variable. That's like over time, picking up shifts, uh, a, a big group comes in. So you've got to put an extra body on. So you've got fixed portion of labor and a variable portion of labor. Now you can work this out and it's very, very easy to work out that your, it just works on your percentages. What's your percentage for your budget for labor? times your projected sales and bing, bang, boom, you got yourself what is fixed and variable. So let's go back to this total fixed costs divided by total projected sales minus variable costs divided by projected sales. So once you've got this, and this is very, very important. You've got your current versus projected. So if you don't know what your break even point is right now with your restaurant in its current state, as it is like opening at 5 p.m., shining at 10 p.m., so on and so forth. Calculate it. Figure that out. 
then look at your projected because once you start adding that extra labor, that extra uh, food cost, that extra bar cost, these sort of things, you may actually find that you make less money opening earlier, opening uh, for brunch, opening for lunch. These are all the crazy things that you really have to access and really figure out. So you've got to set your, uh, be your break even point and then go forward with the plan. Opening up for extra hours doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make the money that you're lo losing by closing early. This is very, this is a very big reality. Victoria, I'm looking at you. A lot of people go, oh, there's enough brunch places in Victoria. They're all, all the regular brunch places are super busy. You open up for brunch and no one fucking comes. Same thing with lunch. Oh, there's no good lunch places. Okay, I'll open up for lunch. You open up for lunch, no one fucking comes. So you have to listen to your market, but also be very realistic that you're not going to do a hundred covers on your first weekend of doing brunch. And if you do do a hundred covers on the first weekend of brunch and you've only got 30 seats, you may fuck it up completely. So really, really, really think about this. This is just one portion. Then you're going to start thinking about resources and training and education and how you're going to pull this off. If you've got staff who are all late night party nightclub-y sort of staff that run your restaurant and your bar, do you need to hire new staff for brunch? If you hire new staff for brunch, then you got to put training in. How much is that going to cost? You got to do all these things. So your brand equity, how affected would your brand equity be if you stop doing brunch? So on and so forth. This is just one small, small, but very important piece of this puzzle of figuring out whether or not you're going to open for brunch, lunch, extended hours, so on and so forth. Um, Put it in perspective, I have not changed my hours at all at Clive's. It's still 5 p.m. to 10. Well, I've changed, obviously, because I had to shut at 10 p.m. 5 to 10 p.m. What am I focusing on? I'm focusing on staff education, squeezing that per head spend up, getting that that stuff, working on get, extending that our uh, spirit list. So our spirit list is printed, costed correctly, this sort of thing, so that the staff know that they can always go to a start thing, the, the list, and get someone to go on expensive bourbon, scotch, whatever. I've gone above and beyond in the way of making sure that every cocktail that comes out is elevated to a point of no return so that it's value for money. The value add prop is huge for those five hours. So maximizing my five hours is my focus, not opening up at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and having a dead two hours and having my staff stay, stand around for two hours or extra overtime and all these things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, because... I think it's something that a lot of restaurants right now are scrambling to figure out what they're going to do with their, themselves with this change. I understand, but stop, take a breath, calculate these things, see how it's going to work for you. See if you're going to actually make profit because if you just put money in the bank and you zip profit on that money in the bank, it's not really helping you out at all. Like there's contribution and there's margins and all this sort of stuff, but have a real good thing. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It's a little bit different to what I'm usually, usually rocking out, but see you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a good week guys. Bye. Thanks for listening, Pose Shifters. I well, hope you enjoyed that episode. I really enjoy sitting down with friends and peers and uh, just chatting about the industry and getting down to the nuts and bolts of what's really going on out there. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, everything on all the platforms. Just hit it up and I'll do my best to answer any queries or questions you have. I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.